This is Carlos Maza. He's a YouTuber. And like a large slice of his generation, he's an ardent believer in extreme socialist policies. That the best way to run an economy is to fleece the rich and to privatise industries. So we need to explain why that simply isn't the case. Now, you may ask, if numerous people do this, then why pick on Carlos? Well, I felt that it would be effective to personalise this debate by targeting the views of an individual. But it's mostly because he's got an annoying face. And he's incredibly certain about his opinions. Now, you may also say, but Clyde, aren't you certain about your opinions too? Well, yes. Yes, I am. But the difference is that I'm certain about things that have already happened, while Carlos is certain about what he hopes to happen in the future, despite the fact that his predictions are in direct contradiction to every piece of evidence in the entirety of human history. So my certainty is justified, while his is borderline insane. Plus, there's that annoying face. Hmm. Nice teeth, though, Carlos. They look... expensive. I'm going to guess that when you argue for the redistribution of the world's wealth, you're not talking about your wealth. You get to keep all your neat stuff. Right? In your socialist utopia, you can still afford to indulge yourself with wildly expensive dentistry. And that's because, like every other socialist in history, Carlos is a massive hypocrite. He also doesn't need to push his policies, because they already exist. If he wants to live in a world where the rich are fleeced and industries are privatised, then he should just move to Venezuela. Instead, he wants to impose the most failed system in history on one of the most successful countries there has ever been. And that's demented. It shouldn't be a surprise why these policies don't work either. Let's look at an analogy. Suppose you had a class with a bright student and a struggling student. The bright student had submitted an A-grade piece of work and their less able counterpart had produced work worthy of an E-grade. But imagine their teacher had said that, to make it fair, she was going to give both students a C-grade. Now, it doesn't take much imagination to picture what will happen from that point on. Knowing that they'll just get robbed of their efforts, the bright student will simply stop working. And knowing that they'll just get handouts, the weaker student will stop working too. Standards in that class will simply collapse. And the same principles apply when that approach is taken with a society or economy. And attempts to impose such systems have failed disastrously on 60 occasions within the span of a single lifetime. But this sort of logic and evidence is insufficient for Carlos to take note. Clearly, the best approach in that class is to reward the student that's doing well and to try to help the one that's struggling. And that same principle applies to societies and economies. But Mazza has the mentality of a looter. He recommends policies that will create resentment on one hand and entitlement on the other. And that's a recipe for disaster. Now, the irony of this is that Carlos is in at least the richest 5% of people on the planet. And going by his teeth, he's probably in the richest 3 to 4%. Because that sort of dental work isn't cheap, is it, Carlos? I certainly couldn't afford treatment like that. But I don't want to steal money from people who can, because that would be disgusting. And I don't think Carlos would like it if I told all the people poorer than him that they could just help themselves to his stuff either. Because that's a lot of people. Carlos Maza is richer than virtually the whole population of Latin and South America. Richer than virtually the whole population of Africa. Richer than the vast majority of Asia. Richer than most of Southern Europe and the Southern United States. And I'd wager that he's richer than a generous slice of Western Europe North America and Australia too. So why don't we tax you to support them, Carlos? The richest 1% already pay 28% of taxes. 
That seems a more than fair enough share to me, because it's counterproductive to squeeze them too hard. You don't help poor people or economies by crippling the minority who are actually generating most of the wealth, in the same way that you don't benefit struggling artists by breaking Picasso's hands. Because in allowing Picasso to excel, you create the market and the inspiration that helps those further down the pecking order. If you allow for a free society, then some people will do better in it than others. But it's permitting those people to excel that benefits the remainder. How many jobs do you suppose Jeff Bezos has created? How much tax revenue have Bill Gates and Steve Jobs generated? Let's take a look at what history can teach us. In about the 1830s, there was dreadful inequality and horrific poverty. And two approaches were suggested to combat this. The first was to overthrow the wealthy and powerful and to redistribute the economy's fruits among the masses. That approach, the one still recommended by Mazza, was tried in Russia, China, North Korea, Cambodia, Venezuela, Angola, Ethiopia and numerous other states. And it resulted in oppression, censorship, slavery, penury, starvation and death. But the second option was to encourage the growth of the economy to benefit the working man. That approach was tried in Britain, America, France, Germany and many other states. And it resulted in freedom, democracy, prosperity, education and a spectacular rise in material benefits. It's why Mazza has the liberty, education and resources to be able to preach his message across such wide public platforms. Had he embarked on an anti-state message in Korea, Russia or China, he would have been imprisoned or killed. Had he hoped to do so in Cambodia or Venezuela, he would not have had the resources to be able to afford to. So we can put up with idiots like Mazza, because his very presence and his ability to rail against the society that provides for him, like some pathetically spoilt teenager, reminds us just how brilliant and successful our states are for all their faults. So thanks, Carlos. Keep on keeping on. And maybe one day, you'll actually grow up. If you've enjoyed this film, please like and subscribe. And if you're interested in these topics, I've written two books which go into them in a huge amount of detail. They're called The Tyranny of the Left, and they're available from Amazon on the links below. Please feel free to pick them up and let me know what you think. Thank you.